Hello, this is Marcus Ripley from Silicon Studio, and today we're going to talk about some common lighting issues and how to work with them. First, let's take a look at light leaks. What is a light leak? A light leak is a situation where the light from one area affects another nearby area. This is most noticeable when you have a dark indoor area with bright light outdoors. There are two different types of light leaks, light map leaks and probe light leaks. A light map leak happens when a single light map pixel extends over a light area and a dark area at the same time. This results in a portion of the light leaking from one area to another, causing a difference in the actual surrounding light versus what the light map is showing. One way to reduce the effects of this issue is to increase the light map resolution of the mesh. If you still want to keep the same light map resolution of the mesh, you can split the light map UV chart manually at the seam between the light and the dark areas. A probe leak occurs when the nearest probe to a probe-lit mesh is in a much darker or lighter area than the mesh itself. The simplest way to lessen this issue is to increase the probe density. If you still want to keep the same probe density, you can add an adaptive probe volume around the mesh and manually set the probe density around it. Next, let's talk about light map seams. Light map seams are a noticeable difference in the lighting on a mesh or between meshes at the edges of a light map, creating a lighting seam across the mesh. There are various causes of light map seams. Light map seams can be caused because pixel stitching fails between two adjacent meshes. As seen in the previous video about lighting modes, the pillars seen here create a seam between the two meshes. You can lessen this issue by using a material over the meshes that can mask the lighting difference. If you're still having issues, you can set the mesh quality for both of the meshes to the same quality level. Light map seams can also be caused by a cylindrical or spherical shape. Let's take a look at the lighthouse here in this scene. When I go to Show, Enlighten, Light Map Charts, you can see where the cylinder on the light map is stitched together. The light map pixels here are not the same size as the surrounding light map pixels and a light map seam will occur between the two meshes along this line. After going to Show, Use Defaults, you can see how the seam is covered in this mesh with a texture. The texture properly handles the seam in the cylinder. Now let's take a look at the upper levels of the lighthouse to see how you can use a different method to handle the light map seams. The main levels of the lighthouse are built with a multiple curved meshes that fit together, forming a cylinder. This is done primarily to allow the lighthouse to be customizable, but also has the added benefit of naturally handling light map seams and inconsistencies. If I go to Show, Enlighten, Light Map Charts, you can see where the light map charts are around the lighthouse. Notice how the charts are different for each one of the individual meshes around the lighthouse. However, the light map pixel sizes are consistent with each other. When I go to Show, Use Defaults, the seams between the meshes of the lighthouse are hardly noticeable. Thanks for joining us for this video, and we'll see you next time.